It's not about to compare with anybody else, but it's too about to observe and look in calm. What is the the trip, the journey that you have been able to do it, to walk, and the map that already came with you. And I'm one of the person that believe that the map can be worse or better depending on you. That's your mission. That's your function. How we can uh, transform that map in something great, or we can destroy the map. I sat down with my dear friend, Gonzalo Rubalcaba, to talk about life and music, and I was half joking with him, but it's true that every time I'm with him, he reminds me to slow down my heartbeat and think about things and feel things just a little deeper, a little slower, a little more in depth than I would normally have. And this interview is exactly like that, and he is exactly how he plays. He's always going deeper, searching, seeking, and always present. So here's my time with Gonzalo Rubalcaba. Hello, friend. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm very good. Uh, here with Gonzalo Rubalcaba. Uh, I want to thank you for spending the time thank with you. me and for all the listeners that will uh, check out what we're talking about. And I, I've told you this before, but I love spending time with you because you're always such a presence and you remind me to slow down my heartbeat. <laughs> You do. <laughs> you do. And and it's funny because, you know, people will tell me that about spending time with them, and you are that for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and, and for me, it's also just how you play, too, because the way that you play, you can play one note, and there are infinite amount of expressions of that one note. And even in, in terms of time time slows down even when you're playing fast. And it's that attention to detail that is there when you're completely present as mm. a person and completely present as a, as a musician. And so I'm just going to start a, a topic talking about time <laughs> because uh, your rhythmic understanding and capacity is... Uh, at a mastery level. And I think that I and the listeners would love to know um, how you've worked on this, the influences that have come into you and the awarenesses and, uh, you know, what we can do to slow down our heartbeat and really understand, understand the grid within the heartbeat. Well, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I would try to to play um, tempo. Mm. Yeah. The first question to me is always if tempo and tempo, which is time, had a, a relationship in between tempo mm. and time. And mm. I see uh, the tempo as part of a, a move around in space. There's, we need a space to know exactly how the tempo work. Uh, because we need to move around at certain speed to know exactly how time we need to go from this point to the other point. So it depends 
uh, how urgent it is for us to arrive to the next point. <laughs> uh, but also depend how enjoyable is the journey to go from this point to the other point. Mm. So there's too many aspects that can change your uh, perception or idea how to work with the temple and the time. Um, Sometimes we had to say it is time is the right time to move on this temple. Um, I see. You see what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm, I need you and people that um, see that uh, interview to. Uh, Forgive me for my English, but I'm trying to, I will be as clear as I can. Clear to me. You know, and then there's influence. There's a lot of influence. You reference that you try to emulate uh, family, people you see in your family, uh, strong personalities that they have their own conception of the temple and how to use the time and how to communicate in, and, and how to use the accent and how to articulate all this machine of the communication. Mm. Mm. Uh, so I'm coming from a family of uh, musicians. A long line of musicians. Yeah. And my father, brothers, uncle, niece, all of them, but not only musicians, um, all those, also dancers, mm. uh, painters, uh, and, um, <clears throat> but music was, uh, I would say, everything in my house. I heard music mm, at home all the time, but not only, I cannot tell you I heard on a specific type of music, but I heard music. We were able to hear, to hear all kind of music. Cuban music, uh, very danceable, uh, the, the music that people used to dance in Cuba, but also Cuba music made it mostly to listen, and, and but also music coming from uh, Afro-Cuban heritage, the folklore, uh, the, the black folklore in Cuba, and also classical music, mm. um, jazz, um, and, and all the possible uh, combination between jazz and and and, and, and all the style of the Cuban music, like um, the guaracha or the, the boleros, with some influence of jazz. I heard everything in at home. So, and I always said that that was probably one of the most valuable experiences. Uh, that there was no border, was not limitation, was no. We said in Spanish, uh, prejuicios, which is a produce. Uh, I don't know if that. That's a, I don't know the word exactly. So, um, my, I remember to hear it probably from my father or from some of my parents to say the most important is to when you listen to music is to uh, to find some values in some mm. uh, something that m move you emotionally, even before of any intellectual reaction, it had to move you emotionally first. And then you can appreciate other aspects of what you're listening. But if, if automatically the music that you hear don't, don't touch you, don't move you, um, it, it means, it doesn't mean that the music is bad, always. It does not a permanent meaning, but it could be yourself that you are not able to understand or to connect with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the so many things that I remember to to absorb to to learn from home. Um, I went to the classic school with a huge European information and. and mm -hmm in terms of uh, the evolution of uh, what we understand as a classical music from even before Baroque until today. 
Um, so I have connection with many different zones of of um, of um, different kind of sounds and vocabulary, music of vocabulary. Um, and it probably helped me a lot to to be flexible and to be comfortable um, um, enjoying and, and listening uh, different uh, type of um, uh, compositions and uh, composers and uh, players and mm-hmm. music from different part of the world that that include different concepts of how to use the rhythm behind the music, uh, how to use the space and the music, how to, to structure the music. Um, so I believe that this is an amazing experience, uh, for, especially for a kid, because right. I'm, I'm talking about I was four or five years old when I saw myself, at least this is what I remember, when I saw myself already um, related to to any instruments. My fa- my house was full of different instruments, of percussion, piano, bass, saxophone, violin, everything. So mm-hmm. at, at that time, when I was four or five years old, I tried to already to to be in connection with that, you know, and I I played percussion. That was my my first um, relationship with mm-hmm. the music was through right. the percussion. Sure. And um, I always said that, um, you know, normally in the school, uh, piano become a complementary instrument for any player. I see. But not percussion. <laughs> and I said uh, it should be, it, could, it must be also mm-hmm. a complementary, um, uh, I mean, the, the percussion for the musicians as well as the piano or harmony, class of harmony or class of contrapoint or whatever. It's good to put every musician in contact with the, that rhythm department since they are littered and uh, in order to, not, not waiting until the last moment, which is you already uh, are involved to play some compositions of, of somebody, it should be part of the beginning of uh, the music education. I mean, as you play trumpet, and the first thing that they put in your in your in your lips is the how you call the that? mouthpiece. The, the mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not the whole instrument. It's that. Mm-hmm. Well, same thing. We we need to learn how. I call the rhythm section the rhythm and the music the machine. Mm. That move the music, they make the music walk. Um, right, and I have it not at the school, but I have a home because I remember that my parents, my father, my uncles, all of them, they were, they played a lot of different style of a Cuban a popular music, Cuban Cuban popular music. And they teach me how to play that, and how the what is the name of this, and you should play that this way. I mean, historically or traditionally, that that style of music should be played in that way. Um, uh, but I remember that they never started playing that to me from the harmony or the melody, but from the rhythm. Said so the rhythm behind that is this, and then it's on the top roots. of that. We have this core, we have that melody, or we have this color. But the first thing is to understand what is happening mm. down yeah. there. Yeah. So it probably helped me a lot too. Uh, That's I, I can relate to that in a way because my my family is uh, musical mm-hmm. as well, and I remember both my parents, my mom and my dad when they would listen to music and I was five, six years old, you know, at that age, and we would listen to, they'd put on a Frank Sinatra record and they'd say, listen to the time. Hey. Listen to the way that he sits in the time. And then they'd put on Earth, Wind and Fire and they'd say, listen to the time. And then my dad would put on Miles Davis. You hear how his time sits on that? And I was always, always very sensitive about listening to the time, mm-hmm. which means the feel. It's the, you know, you were talking about being flexible and malleable with that 
mm-hmm. that root, that grid, and that, that's how you... You know what it reminds me of? It's like, and, and it's, it's almost an image of how you play to me. It's thinking about the comic characters of Superman <laughs> and Flash, because they can go faster than anyone else. <laughs> and th- there's this one scene in one of the movies where they actually <clears throat> see each other, and everybody else is just still because they're moving so much faster. And they're the only ones that can see each other. Mm. And time is a different thing for them, yet they're on the same wave. <laughs> they're on the same grid, but it's timeless. Mm-hmm. And they can just play with it. So it may be moving very fast, it may be moving very slow, but their timelessness within it. You know, coming back to the beginning, I mean, the... the mm. You say, well, even when sometimes you see uh, somebody else, and you refer to me, but uh, playing fast tempos, but uh, but still bringing some uh, calm or whatever we mm-hmm. call this. And um, the reflection about it is that um, I believe that the people that had that that are able to transmit that calm, uh, apparently, to being calm, even in, 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 in situations where tempo is fast and, and there's a lot of information, a mm. busy moment, musically speaking, it's because they, are, they need time to find inside of them. Mm. So you need to bring what you are going to say, uh, any information you're going to bring, you have to take it from somewhere. Uh, otherwise, we are talking about a robot, not a human being. So, yeah, the tempo is fast. But there's a the, the music has a mood. There's an energy. There's a meaning behind that music, and we're supposed to be in, in connection with the meaning of the music. So we had to think. We had to find out inside. We had to be sure that what we are bringing uh, connect with the moment, with the music. It takes time. You cannot be in um, out of focus at this moment mm. in order to just be uh, as fast as the, the peace demand. I mean, the most important. Um, at that moment, or at least for me, it's not even the tempo, but the message. So we had to look for the, uh, the combination to be in time, but at the same time telling the right thing, mm. saying the right thing. And uh, it take a time mm-hmm. to do it right. So you had to take think, time. you had to look around, mm-hmm. you had to see what is happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, even when you play solo, you are not alone. We are never alone. So you have to look around. Um, to again, I repeat that that word to connect. Mm. It is important connect to be connect, connecting with something else. Sometimes you don't know with with what, mm. but you need to connect with something else. Mm. That you that made you feel that you are in the right place, doing the right things. Um, at least you need to be convinced that you are doing the right thing. You know, maybe not. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking about that space in between. Mm-hmm. That feeling of of unity, of all, mm-hmm. and separation. And if you're in a space of separation, then everything is against you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And if you can slide the scale a little bit more to the zero point, more on the side of oneness, then you're going to be able to connect Mm -hmm. and and be part of the whole thing. Exactly. You know what it made me think of? You know, John Faddis tells this story um, about Dizzy, uh, whom I know is a very special human being in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, But... But Fadis was saying, yeah, they, they, they were playing a, a big arena somewhere. And, of course, the, the sound was like... 
<laughs> you know, and it was probably, and he was talking about the break on a night in Tunisia. You know, do that. And then, <laughs> you, know, you know, and, and, and Dizzy played and you couldn't feel the time. In other words, you couldn't hear where anything was. And, um, and Dizzy played the break and, and he was completely on. And so, Fattis asked him, you know, how, how, how could you hear anything? What was going on? And, and, and Dizzy said, well, I, I, I am the time. <laughs> and that, that says everything to me because it's not like in a sense of separation. Mm-hmm. It's more I am the time in the sense of unity. Mm-hmm. You know, you define it there as, as all connected to one. Recently, I think I was talking to Maria, mm-hmm. my wife, a video that I so of Dizzy, an old video, very old. And I saw him playing with his uh, quintet, I think it was a quintet, somewhere in Europe. Mm. And that was another example. I said to Marie exactly what you said at the beginning of the, of the conversation. I said, I mean, if you hear, you don't see it, you hear what he's playing, you probably make... Uh, you create an image, uh, image in your mm-hmm. in your in your mind that the guy is is taking a bad moment. I mean, he's it's difficult to do what he's doing. You know, so you you imagine him physically mm. uh, trying to articulate what he's playing, but in the most you know busy way right. possible. So when you see him playing, it doesn't. He has no. There's no uh, any relation between his attitude with what he's offering musically. So he's playing some really difficult stuff, and, and brilliant, beautiful, but things that we know that only him could do it. But then you see him playing. He was like nothing is happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything here is okay. We are in control of everything. Mm-hmm. You know? And this is one of the of the experiences that really shock you, really impress you a lot. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? How that can possible? It can be possible. How he can be t- that uh, confident about himself. Hmm? His history talk about. I always said that's a, one of the few, few, few artists that I saw in life him in life, he, he got life, that he invited trumpet players, mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of trumpet players to his concerts, mm-hmm. Winter Marsalis, Freddie Hover, Tulo Sandoval, uh, John Fadis, of course, and many, many, many others. Um, all of them trying to, to play great, mm-hmm. but they did it, of course. When the camera turned around to see what Dizzy was doing, he was sincerely enjoying, as a kid, what they were doing. Mm-hmm. He said, Look this! Uh, what he's playing that no, that phrase that no, that's amazing. He, that was a party for him. You know, he was enjoying the moment. So it tells you. I see. You know. It's a lesson. It's a, it's a deep and strong lesson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not many people are able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, the more you can let go of that ego, the mm-hmm. the head, the more capacity you have. The more capacity you have to be timeless. Because mm-hmm. you're not holding on to anything that's so dense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So let, let me ask you this. Um, so in terms of that, that fine detail, I mean, there's, there's a certain, there's all, you're always working on your life, right, to try and open up <laughs> the capacity to be able to handle everything at the same time and create that presence. And then there's realistic application, the practicing playing the one note Mm. for eight hours. And I know you do this. (laughs) I know you've done this all your career. I would love for you to talk about your dedication to practice 
for the people listening so they can get to that level where they can express so purely what they want to express. Where, and, and even where does that dedication come from? Where does that motor come from? Oh, no. But I believe uh, strongly that sound is almost everything. Our music, you know, it's probably not everything, but it's a huge part of what we uh, emit, what we offer in terms of music, the sound. Mm. We can say musically the same. We can, I mean, 10 different piano players, 10 different trumpet players playing exactly the same line. All of them at the same level in terms of capacity. Um, the manipulation of the sound would turn in a different way that music. Not even if you change uh, accent or how long you uh, play that note or you play that note short on this one or or the phrase is organized in a different, in a diff with different uh, amounts of uh, articulation. No, no, no. It's just the sound. And I believe that what really called the attention of many people is that uh, in, term, in, in the case of the piano, and the people say, well, the trumpet, it depends a lot on how you meet the, the, I mean, respiration, how mm -hmm. you meet the sound. And there's something there that easily can affect the sound in one another way. Mm -hmm. But how a same piano player can make the instrument sound differently? Mm -hmm. So I believe that that's something that goes beyond any technique explication or any mechanic uh, because the instrument, sure. no, 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 no. Mm, it it has to do something with the with the intention, mm -hmm. and the intention goes before you play. Is what you see. Yeah, is what you smell. Is um, all those factors that um, um, are produced before you even touch the key. So in that, you know, there's a, a space that we take that mm -hmm. you have to uh, run to arrive to the key. In that amount of uh, space, there's an amount of time. In that amount of time, you know how many things come to your, to your head. And, and I think this is what really makes you sound different. Is everything that, every, everything you are sending, uh, the energy, the, I don't know. But it's not even, of course, you will go to the school and they said, okay, if you want to take your, you want to have a soft sound, um, technically, you need to use the hand in this way and articulate that, that way with your fingers. You cannot attack too far from the, from the instrument because there's a risk to coming from to a lot of weight in your hand, so you have to be close to the keyboard. You can explain technically uh, standards, rules that... Uh, Everybody can use. Sure. At the end, the result is different. Mm -hmm. You know, my my wife uh, is works with sound, with gongs and and the singing bowls and all of mm -hmm. these things, and she'll teach people to play the gong. This is just a gong with a big mallet, and mm -hmm. you play the gong, and when they play, you can hear everything about this person. Oh. Mm -hmm. The first time they play, you can see what's what they're, you know, what might be kind of rough around the edges, mm -hmm. or how they might not listen to someone completely, or you can see where they're so sensitive, 
it's not about playing soft or loud. It's just you can you can feel the level of capacity mm -hmm. or the level of refinement. There's a spiritual uh, element mm -hmm. in this, you know. Sure. It's very spiritual. Um, and that's, this is what makes that moment and that person unique. Mm. You know that you're going to see somebody else, the concept of uh, that specific player, and you know he's going to play Debussy. And you know you're going to hear Debussy, but you know you're going to hear Debussy in his hands. You know, you know mm -hmm. what you're going to see yeah. and what you're going to hear. Um, and this is what made those moments unique. The beauty of, uh, of the unique situation, uh, reaction, how one person can transform something. One of my sons went to, the, to see the Philharmonic in, in Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, two weeks ago. And he mentioned to me that I forget the whole program that Philip Money played. Um, and the, the last one, the last piece was uh, a piece of Debussy. Hmm. And he said, I don't know why. I mean, the whole concert was beautiful, but I don't know why when they played Debussy, that was really the moment when I feel that the whole institution, the whole orchestra, including the conductor, really, um, they embrace, and they, they, they were totally, totally connected, in control mm. of the piece. Well, it can be, uh, there's many aspects can, you can explain that for many reasons, no? Um, he said to me, well, everybody knows that Philharmonic, the Philharmonic now is, is a lot of new people that came in as mm -hmm. part of the orchestra recently. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Orchestra need people working together for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Conductors that know that institution for, for a while, so they mm -hmm. know how to work with that. A repertoire that they play for a while also. They have been playing that music for an amount of time that they already uh, know how to play that, and they know how also to add something to an interpretation of that piece. No, um, so I'm, I'm saying all this um, thing because um, it's good to be clear that um, it's not enough um, be in control. I mean, you have to be in control as much as you can of the instrument, the tools you use to produce mm -hmm. a sound to do music. And when you say that I spend time, yeah, practicing, yeah, I spend a lot of time. Because when I practice, I'm, I'm learning about the music, learning about the instrument, and learning about myself. It's not one thing. I'm trying to put everything together because I'm, Otherwise, I can learn the music. I know the instrument, but I'm not. I'm not sure where I am standing. In which point I am? Yes. Uh, if I am ready or not to play that. Uh, in the way that I aspire, I, I, I imagine to play that music. So, and I was talking to one of the students uh, yesterday about that. I said. You play the new music. It's not about only the music, but it's the first question to me is always, "I'm ready to play that, <laughs> or not? Or I need first to prepare myself, and then I can work with this." Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to explore first and to search first. What is the music about? Then when you know more, more, more or less what is the music about, and then the question is coming to you. I have, I'm in condition, I'm able to afford this challenge? Yes, not, or maybe, mm -hmm. more or less. And then I, I can put together 
a system of practicing. Hmm. I know how to practice mm -hmm. because I. I see. Do you know what I yeah. what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. It's not uh, spending hours and times because uh, that increase my belief that I'm doing something right. Mm? Yeah. Yeah, you're prepping it. Mm -hmm. you, you know what what I admire about that too is that you know you're you're a busy person and you make it a priority to make the time to take the time to go through that process in order to get to the depth that you want to get to. I mean, that has to happen. I can see the way that you're talking about it. You have to approach it that way in order to approach it with integrity. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a trap for a lot of people that get busy to just skip that and, and just deal with it in the moment. And so then, then you're not going to be able to, to deliver and have the experience for yourself Mm -hmm. of depth that you know you're capable of or connect with the outer at the level of depth that you know that you're here to connect with. I do it everywhere. And I, I travel a lot. And um, if I had two days off, no matter where I am, in, in Japan, in France, in Italy, in, in Alaska, that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. I know. I ask for mm -hmm. a piano, mm -hmm. for a place where I can spend some time working in something else. And sometimes I, I crazy about to go out and walk and know the place and enjoy the, the, the day mm. off. I do it. But it's just about to, uh, a planification. You know? I said, okay, I can go out in the afternoon and, and take a wonderful lunch or, or a great dinner in a great restaurant and see the city and come into the museum or, or just walk around. But in the morning, I need to go and, 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 and work. And the people think uh, the work is just the moment of, of the concert. <laughs> right. you know, the concert is the moment of joy. Mm. It's the moment of joy. The work is behind that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's a good reminder for all of us. Um, you know, Gonzalo, I, I want to, if you would share a little bit about Charlie. Charlie. Um, I, I know what a, what a beautiful, beautiful relationship and what mm -hmm. he's meant to you in, in your life. And I wonder if you would just share a little bit of that for our listeners. Mm -hmm. Charlie was Charlie mentor. Hayden. Charlie course. Hayden was a mentor, but was a friend, a real friend. Um, a guy with an amazing qualities in, in his uh, humanly. Uh, I met Charlie. I was too young. <laughs> You know, I, I was able to meet uh, two persons that really changed my life. First, Dizzy, and a year later, a year and a half, Charlie, in the same place, in Havana, in Cuba, the, mm -hmm. at the festival in Havana. The difference with Charlie and Dizzy is that I, I wasn't able to spend uh, the amount of time that I spent with Charlie with Dizzy. Time touring, recording, or, or just spending time together. Mm. Uh, and um, we went to, I don't know how many places around the world together. We shared different projects. He trusts me mm -hmm. uh, as anybody in many issues including the, asking me to produce some of his record. Um, he support me as anybody. So some people ask me, well, you know, it's a blessing uh, to have that support. 
And also, you are very lucky to have people like Dizzy and Charlie that support you in the way they did it. And I think that there's a right way to see it. But we had to add something. So, yeah, it's right. It's a blessing. I was lucky, very lucky. But it was a tremendous responsibility to me. Because um, I knew that Charlie could be the most happy man in the world. 20 years later, after we met, uh, mm. trying to reaffirm, reconfirm what he saw 20 years ago on me when I was a little, uh, uh, a young guy. Wow. So I knew that um, when Charlie gave me possibilities to do this, or to do that, he gave me space, he gave me everything he gave to me. I had to do something with that, you know? It was not granted. And this is what I think is important to have, to be clear about it. Mm. It's not about that somebody come and support you, uh, but you have to return in some way mm. what the confidence and the trust and everything that people give to you and the space and, and, and tools and possibilities and all the circumstances in your favor. Take it. So what are you going to do with that? And um, it was a constant school with him. Every day it was a, was a, a way to, uh, to learn. But to learn, learn not only about music, about everything about the business behind the music, about life, about music, history, because he, ha he was part of a, a huge, uh, many events uh, linked to big, big names, or Nick Coleman, this, 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 this as well. So it's just spending half an hour, an hour talking Mm. with them, listening to them, not even talking to them, listening to them, uh, um, uh, talking about what they did and how, how the thing happened 50 years ago and why they did that. And, and then you, you understand much better the music they do, why they play it in the way they play, how, why they are in the way they are. Just mm -hmm. then a lot of stuff. You know? It is probably... What take you half an hour talking or listening to them? It take normally reading books and listening albums years to put things together, you know, to arm the thing. Um, so it's true. I was very lucky to be part of that, uh, of of to be part of a moment of their life, and and um, uh, and they. I mean, the way the thing happened. I don't even understand why. Everything happened more or less in the same way. You know? In Cuba, playing in a jazz, Havana, Havana Jazz Festival, I was playing with my band. I didn't know Dizzy was there in the audience. Yes. The festival, I brought him to this place to eat something. He was part of a hotel in Havana. And... Um, the, the, the festival was supposed to to start next day or in two days, and and, and I was playing in, in in some concerts that the festival organized before the festival get on. Charlie uh, Dizzy was uh, there, and when I finished, uh, he asked somebody to uh, to bring him backstage because he wanted to talk to me something. I wasn't able at that time, I always said that, to say no in English. But fortunately, there was a guy that translated, <clears throat> and um, this he was an amazing, um, mm. charismatic guy. Mm. Uh, he need not efforts at all to make the people laugh. Mm. And then um, mm. he said, well, 
I'm dizzy, you lesbian say, uh-huh. And um, <laughs> what is your name? He said, said well, my name is Gonzalo Rubalcaba. I said, Gonzalo <laughs> Rubalcaba. <laughs> more or less, but it doesn't matter. How, you know, that that's okay. <laughs> oh, it's okay. He said, well, do you think we can play something together tomorrow or the at the opening of the festival. Mm-hmm. And I thought that it was a joke because he was always joking around. And I said, is he serious about what he's talking about? I said, yeah, I'm serious. He took a, a, a music part from his uh, trumpet mm-hmm. back. He had the trumpet with mm-hmm. him. There was a, a music part full of notes. I don't know where was that. He said, I think we can play that tomorrow. <laughs> the, only, uh, the, only, the only way I see that we can play that uh, is that I run right now to my house. I spend the whole night trying to learn that. He said, no, no, that's a joke. What we can play. And then a friend of mine gave me for a few days a real book he had. And mm. we had to see situations on, in, 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 in time and place. A real book in Havana or something else, you know? Yeah. The people passed yeah. to each one to make copy or to mm-hmm. just to have for two or three days to see what it was. Then you had to mm-hmm. return the book to. Right. And I have a home for two days or something like that. And I tried to see as much as I could. And I found out that piece, Con Alma. And I like it. So when he asked me what, what we can do, I said, Con Alma. He said, how do you know that? I said, well, and I made a story. He said, well, that's a good, good choice. I mean, I played that in this year with Oscar Peterson, and I played with, uh, that's a good choice. Let's do that. But I also want you are banned to play in a concert. You had no idea how that uh, uh, that possibility to play with him, how it changed totally. Mm. Uh, the life of the band, my personal life, everything in, in at that moment. Yes. And um, Charlie, it was exactly the same. Two years later, a year, or year and a half, of, mm-hmm. he was with the, his Liberation Orchestra. That was the first time I saw the band playing together live, and there was Joe Lovano, Kenny Garrett, Jerry Allen on piano, mm-hmm. and many, many, many others. And um, for some reason, they played first, I don't know, when I played at the end with my band, and he stayed with his wife. And when I finished, he went back to the stage, and he said, hey, man, with his... Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> um, the name of me, he said, we, we, need to, we need to play. There's a place that we can go tomorrow, studio, whatever, that we can go. You know any place that we can go record something, a cassette? He said, well, let me see. And then I found out a person that make possible that we come to a studio a Graham in Havana. And actually, we did it. Next day at 2 p.m., we went to that studio. Mm-hmm. And he asked them to record everything we play. And they recorded in cassettes, about two hour and a half different cassettes, mm-hmm. like two or three cassettes. Mm-hmm. He put out a lot of his music. And I tried to read everything he he brought out. So mainly what we played was his music. Mm-hmm. And so I'm a standard. So he said, you know that? You, you know all the things you are? You know this? And then we play. And um, when we finish, he asked for the cassette. And he took the cassette to the guy at that time in charge of Bruno Record. That was Bruce Lumbell. And I didn't know that he was, he had that in plan. Mm-hmm. So he, he opened a door, you know? That was the beginning of a, 
of my relationship with Bruce Lundvall, and then not soon, but a, a few years later, I, I was able to sign with them, and a lot of diff, different stuff happened. And, um, and the first time that I played in, 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 in New York at the Lincoln Center was uh, accompanied by him, and, and there was Jack on drums. I wasn't able to play it in the United States for a long time because I, get, I couldn't get a visa. Right. So all my first recordings were done in Canada, or in Japan, somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and after that, we developed an amazing relationship. Uh, he was always clear, sincere, open. There was nothing, you know. I always said, I never received any verbal, verbally, I never received any um, instruction from him. I said, you have to do that, or you don't do that, or do, no, no. Everything I learned was with his example, just watching him, watching him. And I tried to absorb as much as I could from his playing and how I can bring that experience of his playing in the way that I play. Mm-hmm. We're talking about two different instruments, but it's not about instrument. It's mm-hmm. about the concept, the, how to embrace the music, how to bring the music out. Just looking at him, observing him. We played a lot of concerts in many different uh, venues. I mean, from clubs to halls to uh, open air places, all kind of experience. So we have chance to see and to play together in in in, in different environments. That that sometimes really affect the way you play. Yeah. Sure. And different formats. Duet, trio, quartet, quintet. We went to studios uh, to make recordings. And um, it was an amazing experience. Amazing, amazing. I really was very, very, very sad. Uh, I knew he was sick. I, and unfortunately, at the end of his life, he was about the two two and a half years or three years, last three or four years of his life, it was tough for him. He, uh, he was very sick. And it was difficult to see him in that situation. Um, but still, even in, 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 in sick, he was thinking about uh, the music, how mm-hmm. to do that, and with the hope to... Mm-hmm. Uh, that the, the thing could be different next day, and then we can do something again, and you know, uh, a sweet guy. That's my experience. You know, we are not able to like to 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 be welcome for everybody in this life, but my experience is that. You know, there's no reason to say something different. Um, he was sweet um, with me. With the, um, was, I said I was too young. When I met him, I was 20-something. And um, with the respect that he always demonstrated, not only to me, but I remember that we went out with a band that everybody was really young. There was um, Antonio Sanchez on drums. There was mm. Mike Rodriguez. Um, there was um, Miguel Senong on saxophone. Oriente Lopez, a flute player from Cuba, live in New York. Uh, and I know I'm forgetting somebody else on saxophone, too. Everybody really in the 30s and the 20s, 30 mm-hmm. years old. Charlie was a name already, consolidated. Mm-hmm. You know? 
we never saw, we never felt any thing out of place in terms of uh, the way we communicate, the way not neither stage or out of the stage. It was always a, a gentleman and a clear of everything. He was a leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's how he always sounds to me too. Mm -hmm. And and it's a reminder too, as you were saying, how you were observing and watching and learning. Just a reminder to recognize those moments when they're there, when it's time to to listen, mm -hmm. when it's time to watch. Right now, it's time to observe. <laughs> there's there's nothing to say right now. Mm -hmm. Just watch. Just watch this example. And it's good to recognize that, mm -hmm. to be clear about it. That's the mm -hmm. moment too. Yeah. Just watch and listen, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do. Yeah. Let me ask you one more question, Gonzalo. One more question, and that would be, you're talking about being too young, you know, in your 20s, let's say here you are now with the experiences that you've had in life and music. If you were going to have a conversation with your little Gonzalo at 18 years old and go back, what do you think you would like to tell that 18 year old Gonzalo? to help him on his way to this point? Uh, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> just do it again. I just add probably uh, a <laughs> word which is typical of the people that have been able to leave for a while. And I probably always said, carefully, but do it again. You know, that's it. Because um, it's not true that we are able to change uh, anything we had done. Um, we went to this life in the way we are. We have been created that way. And most than that, even more than that, is the journey of each one. So it's not about to compare with anybody else, but it's too about to observe and look in calm. What is the, the trip, the journey that you have been able to do it, to walk, and the map that already came with you? And I'm one of the persons that believe that the map can be worse or better depending on you. That's your mission. That's your function. How we can uh, transform that map in something great or we can destroy the map, you know, and, and, and make it dark. You know? mm -hmm. Uh, but I, th I believe that everybody had come already with uh, something else that we had to develop, that we had to mm -hmm. work on it. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I remember a teacher that I have at, home, at school, uh, and she used to say uh, regarding the talent, she said, well, what is talent? And she said, talent... She said, think about what is gold. The people that work looking for to see if they can find gold, what they find out when they did. It's a piece of stone. <laughs> but a piece of stone that uh, can be transformed in something else. Mm. We can shape it. Mm? And then 
when it's shaped, it always transformed. That means that uh, our imagination, our dedication, our responsibility, our focus, our energy, our life has been entirely in function of that, trying to do something, trying to put together something else. Um, is it that you say that's talent? Because um, we cannot talk about talent without work. You can bring, you can come live with another, a lot of time to do, I don't know what, whatever. But um, if you don't develop the, uh, uh, an attitude or, or to or a discipline, a concept of discipline, uh, dedication, uh, working on it, uh, um, putting everything possible to. Uh, it's impossible to believe that the talent work by itself. That's it, because I have talent. And, and I own everything because I, I you know, and I, I should be respect, and I should be, um, I'd say, taking in consideration because the talent I have. Mm -hmm. No, it's not true. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. There's no doubt about it. But this is what I learned at home, not even at the school, because home had to do something with you. We cannot expect and waiting for school to do what we should do at home with our kids. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom never came out to work out of the house, but she did everything at home, including my education. Mm. And um, she was the one that really printed on me the concept of discipline mm -hmm. to be serious, mm -hmm. to be focused, to be in love with what I do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that sense of responsibility, it come from her. That was her work. Then this, the school complement other things. Um, but it, I think it's good to, to, to reflect about it. Because, um, I probably I'm getting old, um, which is a blessing. Mm. But um, today I'm here and listening, not in everybody, but listening a lot, comes that goes totally in a different direction mm. in terms of uh, how to get the discipline, how to be. You know, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel grateful and I feel blessed that I have a home like that. Mm -hmm. I had great teachers too. But um, in the house, things were done properly. And that was, uh, I'm not talking about, I mean, it, that was a, a perfect house. Every family has different sides of how to develop a relationship. And, and probably now that I'm, I have the age that I have, or maybe I look back and I said, well, my family, uh, there's some things from, the, from, from my, um, uh, when I was a kid that I, I would not do it in the same way as a family when I, uh, put together my family. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was clear for me that what I said before about it, uh, what my mother did is exactly what, um, what we need today. You know? Moms, mothers are incredible that way because they know exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. Ex they know exactly what you need. You know, maybe discipline, who maybe you are. nurturing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they know you better than you. <laughs> Still, <laughs> mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for this. Thank you. And thank you for sharing all of this. <laughs> and thank you for lowering all of our heartbeats. <laughs> And I'm going to call you The Flash from now on because I think that's how I'm going to see you every time, moving just a little bit in timelessness through the grid. And, Thank you uh, for I the invitation. I love you very much, Gonzalo. Thank you. A pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Much gratitude, everyone, for checking out the podcast. Please just subscribe and follow and like and add a comment as it really helps us expand and grow uh, and keep us all connected together. So I appreciate it very much, and I send you much, much, much love. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>